dear friends uh, welcome to this revision express videos uh, in pediatrics i will be taking the revision express videos of pediatrics uh, this is basically a platform in which we'll be covering all the important topics that we have already covered in pediatrics our main app uh, we are now trying to revise all those topics we'll see how to try and cover the most important relevant topics of pediatrics and uh, the aim is that this should provide you a last minute revision for your examination without the need for having to go through all the topics of pediatrics so these are uh, customized uh, collection of all the important topics of pediatrics which i feel are relevant from your examination point of view and they should cater to most of your exams uh, they should be very helpful for your inict exams also should be very helpful for your neat exams also and should be very helpful for other examinations including your fmg and other examinations also so let us start with uh, this revision express videos uh, in pediatrics uh, i have divided uh, pediatrics into a few important uh, sections the first section that i will go to is the introductory section of pediatrics which is growth and development now here we will be discussing about growth development and malnutrition and all the important relevant topics related to malnutrition now when the child is born the child is known as a newborn and the first 28 days of life the child is called as a newborn any child who is uh, a newborn is a child in his first 28 days of life so the first 28 days of life the child is called as a neonate or a newborn subsequently the child passes through different phases including the first year when the child is called as an infant 1 to 3 years when the child is called as a toddler 3 to 6 years when the child is called as a child in the preschool age group then 6 to 12 years when the child is considered to be in the school age group and subsequently 10 to 19 years is the period according to the world health organization which is called as the adolescent period so adolescent period is a period from 10 years till 19 years of age now in this period which is from 10 to 19 years of age when the sexual characters they start developing that we call as puberty so puberty is actually the development of sexual characters and this develops in which age group this develops in the adolescent period now all the sexual characters that develop in puberty or adolescence actually develop in a sequence and i will tell you the sequence of the development of sexual characters in girls and the sequence of the development of sexual characters in boys so in girls the first sign of puberty is usually thylarchy which starts from the age of about 10 years so puberty starts in girls from the age of about 10 years which is breast development or thylarchy so thylarchy is the breast development in girls this is followed by the development of pubic hairs which is called as puberty which is followed by an acceleration of growth in a child which is called as peak growth period and this is followed by the last sign of puberty in girls which is menarche so what is menarche menarche is the onset of the menstrual cycles so the first sign of puberty in girls is thylarchy which is breast development followed by puberty which is pubic hair development followed by an acceleration in growth velocity so growth is occurring throughout the childhood period but there are two periods when growth accelerates or is faster than the remaining childhood period the first period of peak growth the first peak growth period is usually the intrauterine period and this period continues till the first year of life when the child is called as an infant so the first period which is the peak growth period when the growth is very fast in a child is the intrauterine life and this fast or rapid growth continues in the first year when the child is called as an infant and the second peak growth period the second peak growth period is the period which i have just now told you which is the adolescent or the puberty period so this adolescence or pubertal growth spurt this adolescence or the pubertal growth spurt is the second growth spurt as i told you the first growth spurt is known to occur during the intrauterine life which continues in the first year of life so the intrauterine and the 
infancy period is the period when the growth is very rapid and is called as the first P growth period and the second P growth period is the period of adolescence or pubertal growth. An important thing that you need to remember is that the main hormone that controls the intrauterine growth, the main hormone that controls the intrauterine growth is insulin. So which is the main hormone which controls the intrauterine growth? It is insulin. And that is why in infants of diabetic mothers, because the mother is diabetic, she will have very high glucose and that high glucose will enter into the fetus. So fetal glucose becomes high when the mother is diabetic. And this leads to a hyperinsulinemic state, a high insulin state in a fetus, which is the cause of fetus growing very, very fast during the intrauterine life in infants of diabetic mothers or in children born to diabetic mothers. So in these fetus whose mothers are diabetic, the child is growing very, very fast during the intrauterine life, which contributes to their large for gestational age. So they are large for gestational age when they are born to diabetic mothers. And the reason is hyperinsulinemic state. Coming now to boys, the first sign of Puberty in boys is increase in the size of the testis and in boys puberty normally starts at 11 and a half years. The first sign of puberty in boys is increase in the size of the testis followed again by pubic hair growth which is called as pubarchy followed by peak growth period as was happening in girls followed by the growth of facial hairs, beard and spermarchy spermarchy is sperm development which is the last sign of puberty in boys so for your exams you need to remember the first sign of puberty uh, in girls and boys so first sign of puberty in girls is thelarchy breast development followed by pubarchy followed by p growth velocity followed by the onset of menstrual cycles which is menarchy on the other hand the first sign of puberty in boys is increase in the testicular size followed by pubarchy followed by peak growth velocity followed by the growth of facial hairs and spermarchy which is the last sign of puberty in boys puberty in girls starts from the age of 10 years and puberty in boys starts from the age of about 11 and a half years so puberty in boys starts slightly later in comparison to puberty in girls now, there are certain growth assessment markers that you should be aware of for your exam. So, there are certain growth assessment markers. Those are the markers which we use frequently for assessment of growth in children. So, these growth assessment markers include weight of the child, include the height or length of the child, include the head circumference of the child and include the mid-arm circumference of the child. As you must be knowing very well, weight, length, Head circumference, they all are age dependent markers of growth assessment while mid arm circumference is an age independent marker. So this is an age independent marker of growth assessment. Let us talk about them one by one. First, we'll talk about the weight of the child. As you must be knowing very well, I'm sure you all know this, that the child's weight from birth which is called as the birth weight does not start increasing from the first day so all newborns they have a certain fall in weight in the first few days so in term children there is a fall of 5 to 10 percent of the birth weight and in preterm children there is a fall of 10 to 15 percent of the birth weight so this reduction of fall in the birth weight in a term and preterm child is due to the loss of extracellular water. So all children starting from birth, they usually have a fall in weight, which in term children should be about 5 to 10 percent of the birth weight. And in preterms, it is 10 to 15 percent of the birth weight. So after the child is born, there is a fall in the weight. Then the weight starts increasing again. So the next question that is asked is when do term children regain their birth weight? When do preterm children regain their birth weight? So term newborns after that initial fall in weight, they regain their birth weight by the 10th day of life while preterms 
they regain the birth weight by 14 days of life. So all term newborns, they regain the birth weight by the 10th day of life and all preterm newborns, they regain the birth weight by the 14th day of life. So this is how the weight of the child is falling after birth and then increasing again so that term children regain their birth weight by the 10th day and preterm children regain their birth weight by the 14th day. And then the weight of the child increases, gradually increases in the fashion that I'm telling you. So the weight of the child becomes double the birth weight at five months. So whatever is the birth weight, it becomes double the birth weight at five months. It becomes three times the birth weight at one year. It becomes four times the birth weight at two years. Five times the birth weight at three years. Six times the birth weight at five years. Seven times the birth weight at seven years. And ten times the birth weight at ten years. So the weight of the child becomes double the birth weight at five months. Three times the birth weight at one year. Four times the birth weight at two years. Five times the birth weight at three years. Six times the birth weight at five years. 7 times the birth weight at 7 years and 10 times the birth weight at 10 years. This is how the weight of the child is increasing with age.